uh, I got trucking on my mind. There's a great big convoy trucking across Canada. Truckers who were previously regarded as heroes when they were delivering vital goods and working during the lockdown are now villains as they protest vaccine mandates. So why is no one in the mainstream media talking about it? Hello there, you 4.7 million glorious wonders. How wonderful that we get to be alive together right now in the world and shape reality according to our conscious will and our divine understanding of what this experience is together. You know what I mean. You know the sort of stuff I say, don't you? What's going on with these Canadian truckers? Look in the comments below. We read the comments. I tell you we read the comments. And the reason we're doing this video is because in the comments, do the truckers, do the Canadian truckers. All right, well, do the Canadian truckers. There's a great big convoy heading across Canada to protest vaccine mandates. When we prepare these videos, we have to find mainstream media content to comment on and to build our content and get to help us formulate a perspective so that we can get in a discourse with you. We can't find any about these Canadian truckers and yet people want to hear about it. So what is going on? And the main questions I have to offer is how come the truckers go from being heroes one minute when they're delivering vital goods and services to being loathed if they won't participate and uh, capitulate according to the will of the powerful. The answers are probably pretty bloody obvious to any of you that switched on and I know you are, you wonderful miracle. So let's have a look at this story using stuff we've had to do ourselves because the mainstream media won't bloody do it for us. While more than 85% of Canada's 120,000 truck drivers who regularly cross into the US are vaccinated against COVID-19, as many as 16,000 could be sidelined as a result of new vaccination restrictions put in place in Canada and by President Joe Biden's administration. Many truck are protesting in the protest after Canada's January the 15th deadline, forcing unvaccinated drivers to commit to two weeks of isolation and submit negative COVID-19 tests before being allowed back into the northern country. In a message posted on the Instagram account Freedom Convoy 22, the organisers of the convoy said, here are some facts that the media is not sharing. The trucking convoy is not anti-vaccination. It is anti-government mandates. Many of us are vaccinated. We simply believe that every Canadian should be free to choose and face no discrimination or restrictions on their freedom due to their choice. No forced vaccination. And yes, it is forced when you choose between a shot you don't want and your ability to feed yourself. Truckers will not block emergency vehicles at any point ever and will even assist any person in need at any point in the convoy or protest. People who oppose government mandates are not the tiny group that the media has tried to make us believe. We are significant in numbers, growing by the day, and we will not back down. Whether or not you agree with their aims, of course that's up to you. That's what democracy is. A discourse, a series of opinions being shared, developed, evolved in order to create systems that are fair to as many people as possible. This is precisely what people need to do. You have to work out what your objectives are, work out how you're going to pursue it, make sure you're ideologically sound and that your conduct is fair. The stuff they said about the emergency vehicles, for example, I think that's very important because you can imagine that the way that this protest would be discredited is, oh, they're getting in the way of uh, emergency vehicles. Because we're dealing with a pretty nefarious machine that will say anything to shut down opposition to its intentions. According to CBC News, more than a thousand supporters braved dangerously cold temperatures to greet the convoy as it passed through Headingley, Manitoba, en route to Ottawa. Manitoba resident Terry Mannery told the Canadian news outlet the far-reaching government mandates go too far and have sparked devastating cultural divisions. We're tired of too much dividing people, vaxxed people to unvaxxed people, he said. That's not supposed to happen. We're all one. We're all in this together. It needs to stop right now. Oh, Terry Mannery, he's nailed it, hasn't he, really? People should be able to come together regardless of differences. And in fact, look at the alternative. If people can't accept that we're all different, which is broadly accepted elsewhere in our culture, then we've got nothing to look forward to except endless conflict, conflagration and division, which, here's a side note, is really convenient for institutions and people in power because we will never have the time to go, I'm going to stop looking at you. I'm going to stop thinking, how is this situation benefiting people? What's really going on here? Well over a thousand people lining the Trans-Canada Highway outside of Winnipeg in minus 30 wind chills, protesting what they call government overreach. Somebody has to stand up for Canada and the truckers are doing it. What I will say is it was fucking cold to turn it and every single shot. People are like clinging on to life. Well done doing a truck protest in those conditions because I don't think I'd be able to get out there. I'll be there with the old logs.
building a nice fire. Nearly $5 million has been fundraised for the convoy online by organizer Tamara Litch. That's pretty amazing because that suggests that it is popular, that we're not talking about a minority of people. Isn't that interesting? In a sense, you can see that that's um, a precondition of keeping people separate, isn't it? So only a few people, some weirdos, and all oh, their mad conspiracy theorists. Well, that don't look like a few mad conspiracy theorists. It looks like a, a world record breaking convoy in the snow. The convoy is also growing as a political issue with some conservative MPs expressing their support. It's a shame, isn't it, when these issues generally get used to boost, forgive the word, the kind of agenda of opposing political parties that, you know, really are just point scoring rather than looking at what's best for ordinary people. What's the end point? The end point surely is a fairer society where more people are free, where we accept there are going to be differences, but we don't oppress and control people and we don't prevent people from protesting. When there are new laws introduced, it's like, oh, we've got to shut down that protest. We've got to have more surveillance. Who does that benefit? So even when you happen to agree with the position of the authoritarian state, you of course have to be aware that it might not always be that way. Not saying everyone involved in this movement is an extremist, but are definitely um, trying to aim their narratives at this larger movement to try and see if they can get any traction. As the convoy rolls on, there are concerns about some supporters' views. Online, there have been some threats of violence. Of course there have. Like, I mean, Slipping Lizard and Mr. Trev Lee. Again, this is how narratives are formed, isn't it? Right? You, you can imagine these conversations taking place. There's this popular movement. There's a popular protest against mandates. We want those mandates in place for numerous reasons, and you can speculate as to what they are. You know, some of them good health reasons. Some of them because it supports the interests of the powerful. Some of them because it increases government power in a general way, and governments are about control, and increasing control is a good thing for a government. How do we stop this protest? from increasing in popularity and, heaven forbid, achieving its aims. Well, firstly, you have to control the story. You have to say that this is these guys. You have to depict it. Now, I'm old enough to remember when there was a lot of strong anti-immigrant propaganda in our country, England. So you would continually be bombarded with negative stories about immigrants and never think about what the conditions for being an immigrant or refugee might be. I always think if you agree with what the government is telling you and the media is telling you, have a little think first. Have a little think before you go too far down that line. In a statement, Litch says violence won't be tolerated. One federal official told CBC News they're leaving it up to police to deal with online threats. Tamara Lick, an organiser of the truck convoy, said in a video posted to the convoy's Facebook page that the most extreme voices in the movement do not reflect the position of the protesters. That's generally true, isn't it? Like in any movement, you get people that are very ardent and really fixated on particular outcomes and particular components of the ideology. Where I find myself is I want us all to create a fair and better society, to hold the powerful to account, to have as much individual and collective freedom as possible, to be tolerant of one another, to build better societies together. It's wonderful that these truckers are doing this, regardless of what you feel about what extreme elements might believe in regarding vaccination or vaccine mandates, because like the Indian farm protests, it demonstrates that when people come together, that our voices are heard. That's the only alternative. If the solution's not going to come from within the mainstream, because the mainstream media won't report it, because the government can't abide it, because financial interests will try to stomp it out, then it has to come from us, people coming together, finding novel ways to make ourselves heard. Never violent, because the system knows how to handle violence, how to control it, and how to punish it. And of course, it's morally and ethically wrong to be violent. Then you are the problem if you start doing that stuff. But we have to find ways of making sure that new avenues for power to be expressed are opened, because at the moment, the only way that power can be expressed is with institutions that are in support of one another. If you see anybody trying to associate themselves with us that is acting in that way, you need to get their truck number and their license plate and report it to the police and get it to us and we'll report it to the police. That is not our mandate. Violence and threats is not our mandate. So the organisers of this truck protest are being very clear and explicit. 
What they want, I suppose, is a degree of freedom to carry on working and the acknowledgement that 85% of them are already vaccinated. So a mandate seems excessive when so many of them have already complied with the regulations and suggestions. I think that's really important because if this is eventually reported in the media, you will notice that the things that are highlighted are the negative aspects of the convoy, the negative aspects of the protest so that people can dismiss it and therefore dismiss the voices within it and therefore dismiss the ideology behind it. As it rambled by, no one was hit. It was peaceful. Salvatore Vetro has followed since BC. It's a togetherness like I've never felt before. Don't you recognize that whether you are for vaccine mandates or against vaccine mandates, for vaccines, against vaccines, these sort of things aren't important. Our common bond of humanity, a kind of ecumenism, a word I learned yesterday, a common brotherhood, sisterhood between all of us has got to be developed. Otherwise, the world's going to fall apart. You can see that, right? The small fringe minority of people who are on their way to Ottawa or who are uh, holding unacceptable uh, views uh, that they're expressing, do not represent the views of Canadians who have been there for each other, who know that following the science and stepping up to protect each other is the best way to continue to ensure our freedoms, our rights, our values as a country. There he is saying, like, you know, ordinary Canadians and all that stuff and things that you hear everywhere, follow the science, which, you know, like, look in our videos, there are sort of edicts and pieces of language that if you're trying to avoid conspiracy theories about people saying there's a global elite dominating the world, it's best not to have a handbook of phrases that you all use, like build back better and uh, follow the science, which all of them use, because it makes you feel like there is some centralised authority that's distributing all these uh, idioms. This is what he's had to say uh, in March 2020, the same, just in true. Deal. Just trying to run the country, baby. While many of us are working from home, there are others who aren't able to do that, like the truck drivers who are working day and night to make sure our shelves are stocked. So when you can, please thank a truck driver for everything they're doing and help them however you can. Actually, some of us don't want to be vaccinated. 85% of us are. Like, Listen, you bastards, give me... <laughs> no principles, no values. Think about on our channel how often we say that. You have to have some principles and values that they don't waver. I suppose Trudeau's tweet shows how leaders will change their perspective, the story, the narrative, in accordance with their ongoing desires. Why are the media not reporting this important story of people coming together to express themselves peacefully? Why is that? And why is it that the truckers are being cast as villains in a national narrative when previously they were heroes? We're being told that these truckers are anti-vax when they're in fact anti-vax mandates. If 85% of those truckers supported the San Francisco 49ers, you would go, oh no, there's an anti-San Francisco 49ers movement on the march. And whether you agree with them or not, you should be very observant of the way that they're being used in a particular narrative and how that narrative serves the interests of the powerful. Like the other day when we were talking about how unvaccinated healthcare workers and the unvaxxed were to blame for the spread of coronavirus when another narrative that could be told, and I'm not saying which one is true or that either aren't true, is that hospitals are underfunded. And if you don't fund hospitals correctly, they won't be able to deal with diseases efficiently. One story blames a small population that have no power. The other story points towards corporate irresponsibility and government mishandling. Which story do you think the powerful want you to believe? So if you agree with these truckers or disagree with these truckers, it's important that we have the means for protest, the means to confront power when it becomes necessary to do so. But that's just what I think. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below whether you support them. Let me know what you think about the complexities of this issue. Let me know about other protests around the world that you think are important. Why do you think the mainstream media media aren't reporting this. How have you protested lately? What things are you interested in that we're not reporting? Let us know all of that stuff. Give us a thumbs up. Circulate this video because you're not going to see it in mainstream media. So the responsibility lies with you for ensuring that these stories get told. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at the one about the nurses where we talk about a very similar story about maligning individual groups to support a dominant narrative. Have a look at this video as well. Please sign up to my mailing list where I talk about all my live events and stuff I'm thinking and all the stuff I'm up to. But most importantly of all, Please stay free.